Good evening, one and all. I warmly welcome you to our uh, Cell Talk webinar. In today's session, Dr. C. L. Bharati will be presenting research titled High Frequency of Psychosis in Late Stage Parkinson's Disease. Dr. Bharati is currently working as a clinical content ambassador at Renex Life Sciences. She is a dentist whose area of specialization includes uh, relief of immediate tooth pain. She completed her MDS from Krishna Devaraya Dental College Hospital, Bangalore, in the year 2018, and her BDS, Bachelor of Dental Surgery, from Government Dental College Hospital, Vijayawada, in 2013. She did her immediate schooling, intermediate schooling at Ratnam Residential School and College, Nellore. Apart from her post-graduation, she did oral implantology and a BLS, Basic Life Science course. She currently has four publications and two under peer review. Due to her interest in research, she was working as a freelance writer and associated with various research projects at NTR, University of Health Sciences. She strives to work hard in this fast-paced and highly competitive environment without compromising on productivity. She would also like to implore explore new skills and technologies in this research field to update her knowledge and improve efficiency. Uh, without much further ado, I would like to uh, ask Bharati to take over. Good evening, one and all. Uh, today, I'm going to present my self-talk presentation uh, on the high frequency of psychosis in late-stage Parkinson's disease. The original authors were Ines Chendo and Margarita Fabry et al. So uh, the title is High Frequency of Psychosis in Late Stage Parkinson's Disease. It is related to the Parkinson's disease and it's taken from the journal Clinical Parkinson's and Related Disorders, which was published in the year 2021. This research has an impact on the Parkinson's disease and its correlated symptoms, psychotic disorders and various patterns of psychosis in different psychotic disorders and the frequency of psychosis in Parkinson's disease. Going to the introduction, first of all, what is a Parkinson's disease? So it is a progressive disorder of the nervous system, which is characterized by the tremors, muscular rigidity, and uh, this in the nervous system, or it might happen due to the reduction in the activity of the dopamine. So it might be of various types, Examples are idiopathic, vascular, and drug-induced Parkinson's. So in the Parkinson's disease, we have a variety of symptoms. One among them is psychosis, which is a prevalent non-motor symptom in the Parkinson's disease. So what is psychosis? The psychosis, it's a group of severe mental disorders in which the thought and emotions are so compromised or impaired that the contact of the patient is lost with the external reality. So psychosis is a wide term which includes a variety of disorders. So among them, the major ones are the hallucinations, which are typically visual and delusions. They define the crude form of psychosis. Along with it, we have also very unusual symptoms which contribute to the minor percentage. Those are illusions, the sense of presence and the passing and going hallucinations. So the general background of the purpose of the study is the clinical features of the psychosis in Parkinson's disease are very distinct and they vary compared to the features of psychosis in other neurogenerative disorders such as schizophrenia. So they represent a well-characterized temporal and clinical profile of hallucinations and delusions in the Parkinson's disease. So uh, a working committee from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and the National Institute of Mental Health, uh, they initially proposed the standard diagnostic criteria for the psychosis in Parkinson's disease in the year 2007. So they felt that there was no standard diagnostic criteria to define what exactly is the psychosis in the Parkinson's disease. And they reviewed all the literature that happened long back from the 90s, 90s to 2008. And they reviewed the literature and they divided the patients into three groups based on the clinical features, epidemiology, and the differential diagnosis. They comprised a minimum form of criteria which defines the psychosis in the Parkinson's disease. 
So there are several different estimates to know the prevalence, that is the number of existing cases in the, of psychosis in the Parkinson's disease. Why we are getting this many variations, the reason could be several people use different criteria to exactly define the psychosis. And the psychotic episodes, different, different people evaluated in a different manner. And the samples of the patients that were used were different in different research activities. So due to all these factors, it is very difficult to determine the number of existing cases of psychosis in Parkinson's disorder. Um, according to the criteria given by this NIDS and NMH, even though it is evident that the psychosis will be more prevalent in the late stages of Parkinson's disease, um, they fail to evaluate the presence of psychosis and its associated comorbid psychiatric disorders in the late stage of Parkinson's disease. So the aim of this study is to assess the prevalence of psychosis in the late stage Parkinson's disease using the standardized diagnostic criteria given by this association. Along with this, they added an extra skill that is called as a clinical diagnostic interview. So without no further delay, I proceed to the methodology. First of all, they, what is the standard for the patient recruitment? Uh, they conducted a cross-sectional study in which a clinical observation was conducted at a hospital. That hospital comprises or it consists of the samples of late-stage Parkinson's disease patients. And they were assessed by different psychiatrists, neurologists, and everyone to assess the presence of the psychiatric disturbances. The disturbances includes psychotic disorders, mood disorders, anxiety disorders, impulsive compulsive disorders, and etc. So first, what are all the inclusion criteria? The Parkinson's disease should be present according to the United Kingdom brain bank criteria. So the Society for Parkinson's disease in London, they gave one standard criteria, which is called the brain bank criteria to define the Parkinson's disease. So the criteria includes bradykinesia should be present with any of the following symptoms, that is either muscular rigidity, or you should have a rest tremors, which have the frequency of four to six hertz, or you should have a postural instability, but that instability should not be caused by the primary visual activity or vestibular function or cerebellar function. Next, the patients should have a late stage Parkinson's disease. That is the symptoms should be present from at least seven years. And you should have a scale that is a scale which is usually to measure the uh, Parkinsonism. That is a Hohen and Yar scale. In that scale, the reading should be above three. This scale is given by the Moments Disorder Society and it consists of ratings from one to five. The rating three includes the bilateral disease which is of mild to moderate disability, but the patient is physically independent. So what are all the exclusion criteria? So the dementia, if it is present before the beginning of Parkinson's disease, those patients will be excluded. And dementia, even if it is present after a one year following the Parkinson's disease, the patients will be excluded. Or during the clinical evaluation, that is at the time of taking this diagnostic interview, if it, uh, delirium is present, then the patients will be excluded. So the psychiatrist movement disorder specialist and a neuropsychologist respectively will evaluate the neurological, neuropsychological and mental conditions of the patients. So first of all, what is the psychiatric assessment will be done by a psychiatrist. So he will perform a clinical diagnostic interview and Patients will be classified as psychosis cause two according to the criteria that were given by this association. So what are all those uh, criteria that were given by this association? So before moving that, what is the clinical diagnostic interview and what is its importance? So the clinical diagnostic interview, it serves as a gold standard to uh, diagnose the psychosis in Parkinsonism disease, and this is in collaboration with the diagnostic criteria given by the NIDS and NIMH. The patient's history regarding the drugs, the presence of Parkinsonism disease, and any other usage should be evaluated in the form of questionnaire, either to the patient or to the caregiver who is present next to the patient. And followed by a thorough examination of their medical reports, the clinical diagnostic interview will be conducted. After that, they will be classified as 
psychosis positive or psychosis negative. If the patient is classified as psychosis positive, they should have at least one of the following characteristic symptoms. That is the illusions, false sense of presence, hallucinations, and delusions. And they should have the Parkinson's disease, which is made according to the UK brain bank criteria. That is the bradykinesia with either muscular rigidity or any of the reception uh, four to six hertz rest tremor and postural instability. And that Parkinson's disease should be present before the onset of the psychotic symptoms. And whatever the psychotic symptoms that are present, they should be recurrent or they should hold continuous for at least one month. And the causes for the psychotic symptoms should be not other than the dementia with levy bodies, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, delusional disorder, and the mood disorders with other psychotic features and delirium. So that is the psychiatric assessment we are doing. So clinical diagnostic interview, and they were classified as psychosis positive and negative. Next is the neurological and functional assessment. This is also done by the Movement Disorder Society scale, a scale which consists of rating from one to seven. And patients are asked whether they have having that symptom and this symptom. And based on that, they will be ranked, uh, given the score. The score may range from zero to 199. And based on that, the neuropsychiatric functioning was evaluated. Similarly, the behavioral symptoms were also evaluated with the form form of NPI, neuropsychiatric function, based on the functions. Again, the dementia was identified using the Women's Disorder Society, Parkinson's disease, dementia level two criteria, which consists of the form of questionnaire. Based on that, the patient will be given a score. While the cognitive impairment, that is the MCI, was identified using the Movement Disorder Society, mild cognitive impairment level two criteria, which consists of a comprehensive assessment in the form of a questionnaire. So coming to the results, first, what is the frequency of psychosis and diagnostic subgroups? So there were total 92 late stage Parkinson's and patient disease, uh, patients were recruited based on the recruiting criteria. Among these 92 patients, 51 patients had the current psychotic symptoms. That is, they were psychosis positive. So out of these 51 patients, uh, the 21 patients had previous experience with psychosis and 29 patients they never had the previous experience with psychotic symptoms. And for one patient, they, he doesn't know, he or she doesn't know what exactly the psychotic symptoms are. Then balance 41 patients, out of 41 patients, 20 patients, they had experienced the psychotic symptoms in the past, but currently during the survey or the interview, they don't have any psychotic symptoms. Whereas 21 patients, they doesn't have any psychotic symptoms in the present and the past. So these patients who has the previous psychotic symptoms, but currently not revealing the psychotic symptoms, we may, uh, they might have done a retrospective study again after one month. At that time, patients might tell they might have the psychotic symptoms. So there was no statistically significant difference between the psychosis positive and psychosis negative patients in terms of the sex and current age of the patient and the duration of the Parkinson's disease and the age at which the disease were diagnosed. So next is the, what is the exact frequency of the psychotic symptoms in late stage Parkinson's disease? So hallucinations were reported in about 94.1% patients among the psychosis positive patients, whereas the delusions were recorded in 29.4% patients. Other minor psychotic phenomena, they constitute about 27.5%. So among the hallucinations, visual are the major component and they include 88.2% of the nine, uh, hallucination percentage and auditory were 31.4%. Among the hallucinations, they were persecutory for followed by the jealousy symptoms. Persitory is not, nothing but unable to recognize the reality and jealousy is followed by persitory. So this frequency of psychotic symptoms, they evaluated both using the clinical diagnostic interviews and they also followed all the scales like this Movement Disorder Society Unified Parkinson's Rating Scale mild cognitive impairment scale and different scales which are designed to know the psychotic symptoms. So uh, there was no statistically significant difference between the frequency, but only a few patients who told that they were having the psychotic symptoms in clinical diagnostic interview, they didn't uh, tested for the psychotic symptoms when they used the different scales. 
So the correlation between the psychosis and cognitive performance. So among the 34 psychosis positive patients, 28 patients were found with dementia and six patients has the mild cognitive impairment. That is among the 37 psychosis negative patients, dementia was seen in 15 patients and mild cognitive impairment was seen in around 17 patients. So this results proves that uh, cognitive behavior is associated with the psychosis. So what are all the other comorbidities that are present along with the psych uh, psychotic symptoms in this late Parkinsonism disease? So in the psychotic post to patients, 37 patients had at least one comorbid psychiatric diagnosis. Whereas 13 patients had at least two or more comorbid psychiatric diagnosis. So the, among the patients, 51 who were shown psychosis post to 32 patients were having the most common mood disorder, that is the depression, followed by 40, 14 patients who has the impulsive compulsive disorders and followed by the five patients who has the anxiety disorders. This is the frequency of psychiatric comorbidities. They are not statistically significantly different between the psychosis positive and psychosis negative group. So what exactly the uh, study indicates? So uh, do we have any effect of anti-Parkinsonism treatment? Like the patients who are in the late stage of Parkinsonism, that is they're having the disease from more than seven years. So they're currently under the medication. So does the disease is affected by the any medication? So the relationship of psychotic phenomena to the anti-Parkinsonism medication still remains unclear. Levodopa, which is the commonly used medicine in Parkinsonism disease and the other medications have long been linked to the psychosis in Parkinsonism disease. So it is also referred to as the drug-induced psychosis. But studies also prove that other dopamine agonistics and anticholinergic drugs uh, seems to induce more amount of psychotic disorders than levodopa. And it is clinically proven. And not only the medications, all treatments of the uh, Parkinsonism disease, including the surgical intervention, have been reported to have the more frequency of hallucinations. So stoppage of this Parkinsonism drug therapy might be the first line of choice in controlling the psychosis. So what is the importance of this clinical diagnostic interview in this? So the criteria, as we discussed, uh, they are not able to exactly determine the frequency of psychosis in the late stage of Parkinsonism. So this study had added an additional component that is the clinical diagnostic interview. It is the gold standard and it is in agreement with the criteria. Although the results that uh, depict the frequency of psychosis from the clinical diagnostic interview vary with the results that depict the frequency of psychosis measured from different scales. This study doesn't much focus on the number, but actually it want to know the efficacy of other tools which evaluate the psychosis apart from the scales that are standardly present. So in particular, this psychosis positive patients have more brief psychiatric rating scale when compared to the psychosis negative patients. So this clinical diagnostic interview that we are conducting might serve as an additional tool in determining the psychosis in late Parkinsonism disease patients. And what is the importance of this comorbid symptoms? And the results, there was no statistically significant difference between the existence of these comorbid symptoms in the psychosis positive and negative patients. But when you go to the psychosis positive patients, the most frequent comorbid diagnosis was the depression. And it um, correlates with the several studies that was done before. So this both psychosis and the depression, they might have an effect on the caregiver and it impairs the functionality of the patient. So apart from this depression, the impulsive compulsive disorders and the frequency of psychosis, they also seem to have a correlation, which is proved in the study. So the reason might be if the patient uh, is already having the psychosis, the ongoing dopaminergic treatment may induce the impulsive compulsive disorders. Or if the patient has already has the impulsive compulsive disorders, the presence of these disorders might act as a risk factor to get the psychotic symptoms in Parkinsonism disease. So with this, I conclude my study. Uh, the psychotic symptoms, they were reported in around 55% of the total 92 late-stage Parkinsonism disease patients. And among these 
psychotic positive patients, around 75% of the patients had at least one comorbid psychotic diagnosis, that is either the depression or the obsessive compulsive disorder. So this clinical diagnostic interview, along with the measuring scales that we are using here, they help to increase the sensitivity of detection of diseases in cognitive impairment patients, because sometimes patients were undiagnosed because they might not... Uh, the psychiatric symptoms were not reported properly or the patient may say reluctant during the time of questionnaire. So what are the limitations in the study? The limitations were mainly based in the methodology. First of all, it is a cross-sectional study and it is conducted only in a hospital. So when it comes to the normal population, the frequency and the prevalence of psychiatric symptoms may differ. And here, the clinical diagnostic interview, the information has also been taken from the caregivers apart from the patient. So there might be some under-reporting due to the complete lack of knowledge from the caregiver. So this research has an impact uh, as the researchers to follow the standard diagnostic criteria, and they might uh, include this clinical diagnostic interview in the standard diagnostic criteria to know the incidence of psychosis. And the clinicians, they change the treatment plan uh, keeping in mind the frequency of psychosis in the Parkinson's disease late stages and the caregivers, uh, they will help the patients in giving a better quality of life. Yeah, thank you very much for your patient listening. And if you have any doubts, you can find me at Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bharti. That was truly a refreshing talk. Uh, I will now open the floor to the audience for any questions, concerns, or opinions they have for Bharati. Uh, I have uh, two questions, uh, and Shaheen wants to know uh, that uh, first, what are the criteria used for UK Brain Bank? Yeah, that I already... Uh, mentioned in my lecture so i'm telling you again so uk brain bank the society in london they propose certain criteria to define the parkinsonism it is also called brain bank criteria so it consists of bradykinesia with at least one of the following symptom that is at least either muscular rigidity or the rest tumors with tremors which has the frequency of four to six hertz or either postural instability which is not caused by primary visual vestibular cerebellar or proprioceptive function uh, shaheen has one more question she asks can you name some other psychosis apart from parkinson's disease yeah, we have psychosis that is present in schizophrenia or neuroaffective disorders, a psychosis that occurs due to the usage of drugs and all. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Shaheen. Uh, Vijay has a question. He asks, how likely is a Parkinson's patient to develop psychosis or what percentage of Parkinson's patients develop psychosis? So the incidence of psychosis in Parkinson's patient depends upon several factors. So the exact relation is to be evaluated. So the patients who are on uh, medication, they might get the drug-induced psychosis due to the parking uh, in the Parkinson's patient. So stopping of the drugs, if the patient, like if we feel the patient is developing psychotic symptoms, it can be uh, operated. And the percentage, the literature gives different percentages. So there is no exact value of the percentage. In this current study, they concluded that among the 92 persons, uh, like 92 persons, 51 patients were psychosis positive. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Vijay. Uh, uh, Nupur has a question. Uh, she asks, for some patients, uh, they observe psychosis in the past. So how did it stop? Yeah, they were under uh, um, antipsychotic drugs. And those patients also, uh, like uh, they were conducted in the study, but uh, they were included in the study previously. They might be taking the medication, but due to the medication, the psychotic symptoms might have disappeared. And... Uh, I hope that answers your question, Nupur. Uh, Nomer has a question as well. He asks, should there be more emphasis on preventing the late stage psychosis in PD patients from the start of the PD treatment? treatment? Yeah, definitely there should be more emphasis. That's what it's uh, revealed in the study. But uh, few studies mentioned that uh, the usage of anti-Parkinsonism drugs um, 
like in patients of parkinson's if they are under medication or if they are not under medication there won't be any difference in the incidence of psychosis in parkinson's uh, whereas other few studies mentioned that the psychosis that is coming in parkinson's it might be due to the drug being used so if we change the treatment plan there might be chance of uh, declining the psychosis in parkinson's patients oh i hope that answers your question amit uh, so i see no other questions uh, in the chat box or in the question answer panel so thank you so much everyone for all your questions and i once again thank dr bharti for today's session and so in closing this webinar i would also like to inform the audience of the next self talk webinar that will be held on the 16th of november 2022 and mr jay darji will be presenting on the topic a comparative analysis of machine learning algorithms to predict alzheimer's disease thank you so much everyone for your presence today and we hope to see you this time next week as well wishing you a great weekend ahead week ahead week ahead good night